Let's hear it for this 312, <laughs> Miss Janet. brought to you by everyone try mimosas now for only four dollars a cake of coffee drink up enjoy are you done i had to do my ad for you guys i have been uh trying in a quest to write a poem a day i thought i would try to poetically not necessarily religiously but poetically write about books from the bible going in alphabetical order. I was here last time and I read Genesis 2 and 3, so I thought I would read Genesis 1 for you. I have no idea how long these are, so you guys can tell me if I can read a second one. Anyway, this is Genesis 1. Before the beginning, there was nothing. In the beginning, the abundance of everything was trapped into a microscopic speck of nothing and decided to become energy, expand, break free. But here is the dilemma for the average Joe. Wait a minute, you were trying to tell me that there was nothing. It's hard to imagine. But if there was no space, how does energy expand into nothingness? Ah, now you're starting to understand what all these great minds and saints have been trying to actually grasp. Because in the beginning, space was created by that expanding energy. And in the beginning, there was no form. In the vacuum of space, there was no matter. Only when that energy of the hydrogen electrons passed through the Higgs field to trade some of its energy for matter, that's when the void and darkness was given form. Let there be light, and so it came to be, in particles energetically speeding away from each other at faster and faster speeds than the human brain can even imagine. And as time came to pass, this energy made stars. Let there be more light. Above the orbiting rocks, let there be firmament, where celestial orbs scatter through the darkened skies, surrounding the circling of these stars as they all spin together to share this cosmic ride through the heavens, expanding farther, faster. As the spinning slows and temperatures subside, let orbiting ice from the sky showered water out of these celestial orbs, and let there be seas separated by stone and rock we call dry land. And on this one place that we now call Earth, with seas separating land, bring forth grass, herb yielding seeds, fruit trees yielding fruit. Time was divided into day and night, let it be so. A greater light ruled the day, a lesser light ruled the night, and we saw that this was good. Once on this earth, teeming with the primordial ingredients for life, let there be life, created in the waters, brought forth abundantly, and every living creature will move it across the land, and now nature could be fruitful and multiply, and so it was. There and more was created in its image, as more and more grew, more and more learned how to live on these lands separated by seas to better suit their natural environment, to grow, to survive and thrive, to further multiply and be merry. And to the creatures of this blessed earth, they have all dominion over what they have can harness with every green herb for meat. And it was so. Behold, this thing that was made, it was very good. After all this work and all that was made, rest and appreciate all of this great creation. The plant, the rain that falls after humankind tills the soil, breathing into your nostrils the breath of life. I have no idea how long that was. Is it all right to read another one? Uh, just one more. Oh, you and we're going to try and rotate the list. Okay, then I'm going to do a short one. 
I'm going to skip ahead and go to Genesis 28. I had a dream the other night that there was a ladder here on earth which led to heaven. God and angels descended it. I could climb it and be one with God. What a splendid idea, I thought, when I woke. Because I believe my dream was telling me that heaven is also on earth. So I'll make changes here to make it so. Let's hear it for Janet.